Thank you. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone. Today we're gonna review chapter 14, R6. So the learning objectives, I, I didn't make any changes on the on the slides. There are kind of lengthy, the, the, the person that, that, that did them uh, added like everything that, that, that was in the in the book. So they're, they're really good. Mm, so we have, we're, we're gonna discuss how to construct an R6 class. We're gonna overview the different mechanisms of, uh, in, of our R6 class. Uh, all, like all of the the methods the methods that are associated with with the with R six classes, and we're gonna uh, like we're gonna get into some some examples and the consequences of this reference semantics. I've never heard that that um, that before, and uh, yeah, we're gonna review why the book says that uh, R six is better over refer reference classes. Okay, so first an overview uh, of object-oriented programming. I think Derek, Derek uh, gave us an, an overview during during the the discussion about about the about uh, the basic types. So uh, object-oriented programming has four pillars. The, the like when 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 you get into computer science when you're a bachelor like you have to know them by heart like you, you have to know them by memory so it's abstraction and that means that you only put uh what you need in your in your objects objects are, are going to made are, are going to be made out of fields and methods it's kind of the same as in variables and uh functions so we can we can think uh, of of fields and methods in that way. So yeah, you only put whatever you need. Uh, polymorphism is something that we've already talked about uh, when we review S three. That means that a method can uh, have like a different a different um, behavior uh, according to the type of object that that it is receiving as a, as an argument. Inheritance. Uh, we also we also uh, review them on uh, when when we review S three. That means you can have an object that inherits the all of the fields and methods from the the parent class. And uh, encapsulation. That means that uh, the the user or other objects will only see what they need to see about how you implemented how you implemented uh stuff okay so okay so uh r6 classes are not built into into base we need to actually install uh, a package and mm, they have two special properties. They use the, like this this object oriented programming paradigm, and here methods methods will were are gonna belong to objects and not generics. So everything that we review uh, last week about about generics that's not gonna that's not gonna work here, and the syntax is actually different. We're gonna call a method from an object with the uh, dollar sign yeah with with the dollar sign symbol and that will be kind of uh the same as like when you're working with python as using the the, the dot to call a method from an object mm, r6 uh objects are mutable they are modified in place we're gonna we're gonna see uh what this means later and like kind of it is the the the, the object oriented um, programming um, system that it's similar uh, of of that in 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 other languages, but uh, the the book says that it can lead to non idiomatic R code. I didn't get exactly why, but um, but yeah, like it says that you should avoid using R six always when you can actually use uh, S3. So we kind of have to be, be, be careful uh, about that. Mm, okay. So uh, the book said that this is the only function that we're gonna need for, for, for from the R6 uh, package, the R6 class function. 
And this function is going to receive two important, two important uh, arguments. One is going to be the name of the class. That's the class name. And the other one is going to be a list. And this list is going to contain fields, like, like Zoom here, and methods, like add. Again, we can think uh, of them as variables and, and functions. And uh, this, this list and these fields uh, and methods that are, that are here are gonna be public. So all of the other objects and like the user is, is gonna be able to uh, call the methods and see the variables. Mm, it also says that we have to like, we, we should always assign the result of an, of an R6 class to a variable that has the same, the exact same name as the, uh, like as, as the class name. And I actually like, uh, I, I had a, a, a type on, on one of the exercises and it, and it throws an error. So you should always uh, assign the, the variable to, you should always assign the result of the uh, R6 class to a variable with the same name. Mm, they suggest some uh, style style conventions that are uh, not that common in R, upper camel case for the class names and uh, snake case for the for the methods. Mm. And yes, and like the use of self, that's that's important. Every time that we wanna make a reference of one of the fields in the class inside of one of the me methods, we, we're not gonna, we cannot use only the name of the field. We cannot use only Zoom. We're gonna have to use self, dollar sign, sum. And the 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 book actually says like mm, I think at, at at the very very end why is that and it is because R six has two environments one for the fields and one for the variables so if we create a variable like here or for instance x x is gonna live in another environment than uh, self well, than, than Zoom and all of the, the other uh, fields that, that are associated with, with the class. So we have to take that uh, into account. Mm, okay. And when we build an object, we, yes, we build an object of that class by using the method new. As you saw, we don't have to, I mean, we don't have to put the, the method new here. That's a method that every R6 class has. And that is the method that we use to create ob objects. In like classic object-oriented programming, you say you are in instance, uh, instantiating. <laughs> uh, you make an instance of your class when you create an object. Objects are instances of classes. Uh, so yeah, that this is uh, this is how, how how it works. So here, like accumulator is our class, and X will be our our object. Okay. And as we saw, like when we created uh, the the class, this method of the of the accumulator uh, class. Is returning invisible self. That means that it is it is returning like it's it's returning itself uh, in in an invisible in an invisible way, and that allows this that is a uh, method chaining. So that means that we can we can call add many many times. And then we can actually uh, get the 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 field uh, that, that is zoom that is the field that is being uh, that is being updating. So yeah, that's why they have to return the invisible self. If they will return only I don't know for instance only some, 
then you won't be able to to do this because this will return an integer or 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 a numeric, and then you won't be able to call add uh, on that uh, numeric. Not all of your methods must return invisible self. Only the ones that that are changing some of your fields. Like you can also like do some calculations and and return like a, a different variable. Uh, but but yeah, all of the objects that make changes, sorry, all of the methods that make changes in one of your fields must return uh, invisible self. Mm. And there are other there are other uh, methods that that are uh, that are important for R six classes. Again, we don't have to write these methods into our our R six class, and those are print and initialize. As we as we saw in last week in 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 S three, initialize works as the constructor. Kind of like the same. It it will uh, override the uh, it will override the, the behavior of new, and again like the same as, as in the uh, S three constructor, you will use initialize if you need some uh, some more checks or if you need to to I don't know uh, assign some other some other fields in your in your class. And the print will, I mean, it's it's like very obvious. Will uh, override the, the 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 functionality of the of the print for your for the objects of your class. Mm, we can review this this uh this class if you want to. It's one of the. It's actually one of the exercises in the in the book. Uh, as Oliver was uh, was saying. Uh, the the book asks us to um, create a class that it's a a, a bank account that that allows you to uh to make deposits and and withdrawals. Mm, it's like very mm, it's very self self explanatory. I think right here the person that the that, that wrote this code uh they decided to assign an an owner of the bank account and a type you don't actually like need 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 them uh what you need is a variable to have the the balance of your of your bank account and uh the deposits will update the balance of the bank account uh with a sum and the withdrawals will will update it with uh with a uh with a minus Mm. Do you have any questions? Like, is everything like clear until only here? No? Sorry. Okay. So we're gonna see how this uh, bank account uh, works. As we saw in these implementations, they are using initialize to override the um, the the new the new method so this this class will receive the owner and and the type and they're going to be assigned to these fields so that's what is happening here new needs two arguments the name and the type of the of the bank account and then Mm, they they just they're just calling the the deposit and they are printing the actual object and they here the, they are uh they're calling the the withdrawal method withdrawal method and also printing printing the object Now, when we want to override the print method, what we have to do is write a print method inside our our class. Mm, and Diana, can I ask a question? Yeah. Sorry, yes. it took me a second to unmute. Um, can you can you go back one slide? Yes. So one thing that's interesting to me, and I just want to say it out loud to make sure I'm on the right page and understanding this, is like. When you're running this function, 
you are updating the value of Colin savings. Mm -hmm. Like you didn't have to assign Colin savings gets the output of this function. Exactly. And, and that's gotta be like a fundamental piece of what this is going on here as this idea of object oriented. Mm, no, that, that is actually done by the invisible self. Like by this and the invisible self, we can like. So yeah. I could have written that. I could have done that in um, in S three. No, <laughs> and so that it, <laughs> it is it is particular to this. Yes, it is. It is particular to this, and uh, and yes, like yes, yes, it is particular to this. So so yeah, we have like I didn't put any uh owner and and. Uh, the the type of the of the savings, but I mean we de we declare uh an object of that class, and then we can yeah we we can review the balance, and we didn't have to do anything to actually. Well, but that one makes sense to me balance. because that one's an assignment. It's it's line 79, 80, and 81 that I'm trying to wrap my head around. The assignment of it. Like line 78, I, I get. Okay. So we call deposit on this. We call the method deposit on this object. And what happens here is that uh, we're saying let's deposit 40, 40 bucks. So X take takes that uh, 40 value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 then, it's fine. I'm, I'm following all of that. I'm totally yes. following all of that. And that invisible thing is new to me. I'm just trying to process like the assignment operator. Like I get the adding and the subtracting and the balance and yeah. Oh, so, sorry, what, what assignment uh, operator? There is none is my point. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, there, there okay. There is none assi assignment operation because that's done inside the method. So we are reassigning the reassigning the value of balance that is a field inside this object. But that Everything. wouldn't work if you put it inside of an S3 object. That, that, exactly. That wouldn't work. And, so mm -hmm. it's not related to object oriented stuff because S3 is still object oriented. It's very much R6. This is just how R6 works yeah so okay I, i'm gonna i'm gonna uh share to you the the uh the answer because that is actually one of the one of the questions that the, that the book has why can you model a bank account or a deck of cards is another one of the on the uh of the exercises with an s class and uh, with an s3 class and i and like i had to look for, for that because I, I didn't know it says Every time you deposit money in your bank account or uh, or draw a card from, from the deck, you will get a new copy of the object. So our S3 class won't be able to save the state of that balance uh, variable or, or that balance field. So it will return a new, a new uh, balance every time we call it. Mm -hmm. I think... It, this feels super fundamental to me, but maybe it's just um, no. Uh, maybe my head isn't isn't really. I feel like you could almost do it with when we were talking about those um, function factories, the ones like the counter function and things like that. It's a little bit more to me in my head. It's almost more similar to that idea with the. You remember the counter function mm -hmm. where you could. Over yeah. and over, and it would go one yeah. two. Three. You can yeah. probably yeah. do that with an, uh, a specific environment. And you create, a, let's say, like you create an environment for like Collins and just update inside of this environment. Yeah. I wonder if that's the fundamental difference um, because like S3 classes don't encapsulate an environment. Yes. They're, they're within the global environment and they use that environment, whereas R6 has its own little mini environment inside the object. Yeah. Yeah. I always think R6 is being its own little universe. It's just it's, its own little thing that it's almost like its own little function, the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. Also, I'm not sure I fully understand, but I think it's implement a different kind of copy and modify. I mean, it's not copy and modify, it's copy and reference, if I yeah. understand correctly. Yeah. So uh, it's also different in the way like it's still uh, value in memory. Yes, 
and and it says it's here like it is, it is possible to combine STEM oh, yeah. classes with an environment like the way uh r r six works, but it's it is still like that. And I will and I will say oh let's let's try to create an S three uh object and see what happens. But I actually I, I didn't do the S three. No, 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 no. So I think I will yeah I will kick my myself on the foot uh if we try to do that. Mm -hmm. answer Derek, Derek has, has got an interesting yes. question. Can you try it, uh, that, you know, because yes. you have like... Uh, the... He says, if I run uh, calling savings balance, I don't get an error. Okay, I'm going to do it with, with my... Yeah, because you have the, the correct state on your computer. Thank you. As an... One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. Or Bob. No, yeah. this is correct. Just try like the one, two, three, four with characters. Okay. But it was that no, example. No, I think he meant the whole thing in quotes. I don't think he yes, was saying yes, I, I think he meant the whole thing. The, yeah. the whole the whole uh, sentence in, in quotes. In quotes. But I, I don't think like you won't get an error. You still won't get an error because because yeah. that balance is uh a public field. You're able to modify it as, as you want, like you as the user of the of the object. Okay, thank you. Like, I think it will throw an error when we try to to like some something, but the, the try to deposit now. Yes, now try to deposit ten or something. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It like it will throw throw an error here, but but yeah. But there was a a read only field example that if we made deposit uh, balance a read only field then you would be able to deposit into it, but you wouldn't be able to overwrite it, I think. Yes, yes, that, and and we're going to get to to that. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Okay, yes, so so that, that assignment is done by the self, like, environment and the, the return of uh, invisible self. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, now the the printing, mm, they they uh they override the the print. So now every time uh that the, that one of the objects from this class mm, gets printed, it's gonna print with the entire thing, the account owner, the account type, and everything. So, but we should we should um take something into account. This will only affect new objects. Mm, what's it? Okay. I'm going to. So uh, I'll just copy up and paste the code. Uh, the class has exactly the same name as my previous class. And let's remember that I already had uh, an object. Uh, from, from that class. So, okay, I create a, a new class and uh, I do like my uh, nice print. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna call a bank account and create a new object and thank you, Copilot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And if we try to deposit and then print it, wait. it will print with the format uh, from uh, from from the new class. But let's remember that I already had an object called my bank that had uh, the one two three. Uh, one, two, three, five balance. And if I print this, this one is still using the old print. So the new methods and the new fields, because this object won't have an owner and a type, they will only affect the object that, that get created after we are uh, kind of re re redefined or our our r6 uh, class okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and like the the the, uh, the slides are already have have something like this. It says like, how does this work? And it actually has like all of the the references for the different uh, environments, and that's like uh those those diagrams are are a bit uh too much for me mm, but okay I, i'm guessing that like this is the the environment and this is where self live and all of the mm, all of the methods and the and the fields are pointing to to that environment and that's the thing that we don't have when with s3 objects right we wouldn't have like this environment uh with all of the where yeah with the variables and everything like this this wouldn't exist and we will we will have everything in here yes like I, i'm i'm not that sure but i, I think that's how, how that that will be the difference uh between the the s3 objects and uh, r6 mm. Oh, Oliver says that uh, he says my understanding is that my nice print and my background has two different closings. Yes, but I was yes, yes, like that. There are two different things, although they have the same class name. They those objects they don't know uh anything about about each other. They don't know that that they're related or or nothing. No, I, I was thinking about like S three and and R six with this with this diagram uh and and what we were uh, discussing previously that the bank account won't work because we don't have this environment that has uh, the self and closing. And uh, yes, we can also add some new methods with uh, set, but again, like these new methods will be only um, available for new objects. So I don't think that it will be like, I don't think this is a good idea because then like you you will lose track of, of like which objects have have uh, methods and which which object uh, don't have them. So, so yeah, uh, I wouldn't advise um, doing this. Okay, now we get uh into inheritance. Uh the the inherit behavior, sorry, to inherit uh, behavior from an existing class, we have to use the inherit argument and we put the 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 variable that is uh that the variable that is associated with our uh with our class that, that was with, with our parent class. So yeah, like is is not a string is is the actual uh, variable and the child the child uh object the child class will have all of the previous fields and methods available they will still if they have exactly the same name as with balance we will have to call them or we will have to make a reference to those uh, fields and methods as if they were written here with self dollar sign uh, balance. But if we, and, and sorry, I don't think there is a, there is an example and I should have put it there. But if we, um, if we overwrite some, some method and we want to make a reference or or call one of the uh one of the methods from the parent class we will have to use super mm. the withdraw was not from the previous one well you change the withdraw with the top of a draft yeah but they don't they don't call uh oh. super yes uh let me let me check if there was uh Mm -mm. I'm still going. Okay. Uh and and I actually like when I when I was um, when I was doing the, the 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 exercises, I will put like super uh dollar sign balance and it will throw an, an error. And I will be like like why if this is this is a field from the from the parent class, but no, if we if we are not doing 
anything different with that field or with that method, we have to call it as self. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Why think... would you even want to call it super? Um, I think it's just a convention to remind us that it's the um, super class, right? Like the above class. Yes, super. Yes, super will be the 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 parent class. Mm, so let's let's try to do something. So uh, let's use this and. I don't need any of this, and this will be a child by maybe we we want to um yeah with the with the withdrawal i'm gonna remove all of this one of the one of the one of the uh exercises said that uh you should draw a warning if uh someone tries to to withdraw more money that than, than, than they have so this means that we're gonna it's warning, right? Warning. So if if self balance is written is less than um uh, than zero, we're gonna try. We're gonna uh send a warning. Depth. Mm. Depth. Okay. <laughs> depth. 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 Okay. <laughs> But you still want to like make the withdrawal. So in this case, we're gonna use super and we're still gonna call it. So this will call the original uh the original method. You have a comma on line 36 that I think is gonna get you into trouble. Oh yes, thank you. Okay, so uh let's say. It will still need the two the two arguments. And oh. Oh. Okay. So uh, I I didn't need it. I I didn't know. So the initialize doesn't get we don't inherit the initialize that's weird that's weird isn't it yeah because it does yeah it should generate the previous method no i i i thought so Will be zero. Oh. oh. Do print on child bank account just to see if it made somebody yeah. the owner. It used the old print. Yes, it it used the old print. Okay. print. So do you have multiple bank uh, bank accounts? Uh, clean your environments, maybe. Yeah. Kill the session. Everything. <laughs> Destroy everything. <laughs> I know the uh, the shortcut key, like it is, I think it's control shift F6 for- um, Control shift. Uh, don't quote me on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have to do it by hand <laughs> or no, sorry, F10. Hmm. What is it? It still gets the, 
Uh, restart, control shift F10, control shift F10 restarts your R session. Uh, but the problem is control alt F10 in Linux puts you in, like puts you down into terminal and sticks you in another. So yeah, yeah, we so. just have one bank account, one shield bank account and yeah, you need to load L6. Okay, so let's let's do yeah, it. kill everything. Yeah. Okay. So we have our bank account and the child bank account that it's in inherent in this. And we create let's try to call this one. And he doesn't like it. Yeah. So I wonder if the initialize is just not part of what gets inherited. Yeah, right. apparently. <laughs> And the and not the, the the print either. Let's deposit. No, there's there is something wrong. It isn't inheriting. There's something yeah. about the inherit that it's not inheriting. Yes. <clears throat> this is the Oh, oh, the invisible uh, cipher is oh, nice too. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I know what it is. I put it inside the list of public uh, uh, of public methods and and. It should be on the call of yeah. the. Okay, yeah, it's an it argument should... of Ersi's class. Yes. Yeah. Good catch and thanks for doing that. <laughs> okay, so it should work now. That was complicated. Kill everything first and restart everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we do have uh, our uh, we make the, the deposit and we make another deposit and we call balance. And we can create a, like a super bank account. This one will be only a, a bank account. I guess um I guess copilot likes do you need the new? Yes, sorry. I only got that because copilot said to do that and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> and uh this one can also do the super um, button. Honestly, it's like it's it's good. Like I I like a pilot, but sometimes it's so annoying and it gets a lot of the uh, parentheses wrong. If I'm already like like if I have some like uh like deployer uh, functions and 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 actions, like it will get the parentheses wrong every time. And I'm like that should be like the the easiest thing, but. Kind of like the default R Studio behavior of auto completing your parentheses, like it drives me nuts because it often makes mistakes if you have something kind of half. If you delete one, then you can't kind of just close it properly. Okay, so if we try to withdraw uh, a lot of money from our super bank account, it won't say anything, but if we try to do it from the child bank account, it will throw it will throw the the warning. So at the end we will have the like it will make the withdrawal, but uh it will it will throw throw the the dev warning, and we actually call like right here we're calling the uh the the method from the parent class. If we didn't want to do that, we can we could like just write the 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 minus like the rest here, but nice. Mm, okay, and then uh, it talks about mm, the bugging, but I I don't want to get that much into that. I found the I found uh this hmm. Uh, I found this uh this book from from Berkeley Statistics, but this is actually wrong. 
And I think I'm gonna submit a a an issue on their on their GitHub because you you called it the, the book with the method name on the class like right here we'll have to uh call bank account uh the book but then you you call the method with the method name on your object and not on your class so like this this is is this is not uh, correct but yeah we. It's just gonna like stop when you when we call the method and uh it will allow us to to like follow all of the all of the steps. But I think we're gonna we're gonna see our uh, the boolean in later later chapters. Mm, okay. So all of the uh R6 objects they have S3 and uh, they have an S3 class that reflects the, the hierarchy. So if we if we wanna uh, check the classes from our objects, we just have to call class from this. So it will say it it is our class child bank account that inherits from bank account that it, it's an R6 object. Mm, as we saw we have the public methods and the uh, the public fields, but we can also create private, private and active uh, methods and fields. And for the private, private methods, it's exactly the same. We we create a list when where we define our our uh, fields and methods. But then when we want to refer to those fields and methods, instead of calling self uh dollar sign we have to call private and and dollar sign mm. and we're gonna review uh the the active in a minute as Steffi said the there was an exercise when they uh asked us to i don't know you, you can hide the, the balance and that way we won't be able to do what we did uh just now like we could assign the balance field to in any value, any type of value. Right here, they using private private to uh to set an account number um, field. So it's the same, it's a list. And every time that we try to get the account number, uh we have to call private uh, dollar sign. Mm. And right here, they they are actually they are actually combining the 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 active thing. So okay, so if if there is no if there is no uh, question uh, on the private thing, we can we can go to the active. So like users won't be able to do as we did um, with our objects, like bank account dollar signs account number that that will throw an error like it, it will say that there are uh, object doesn't have uh, that field and the active fields they are they are a little bit uh, weirder it says they allow us to define components that look like fields so they're going to look like variables but they are actually defined uh, with functions like just just as, as we're defining uh, the methods and um, they use uh they're implemented using active binding and they these are methods that will only take one one argument and that argument it's called a uh, value so from the perspective of the user you will think that you are actually dealing with a field but it is actually a function and what these active uh with what these active fields uh, are gonna do is that if if they don't get a value here they will uh return the value they will ret they will return uh, a value and if they get a value here they will update uh something in this case this uh active field will update the private the private uh, field account number mm. was, was this clear or I, I think I I think I, I, I didn't make myself clear sorry 
Mm. Oliver said it is just uh, increasing and I this. Mm. So yeah, we, we you want you want you want like your bank account to have like a let's say bank numbers. Uh, yeah. Here, like you are using UUID to get a bank numbers. Like you probably like have some way to generate a, an official bank numbers, and you are just assuring like you are drawing a new one and not uh, a one that have already been drawn. This, I don't think it's it's matter too much here. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Uh. Yeah. In in the exercises, they they they. They have an exercise about random numbers, and they ask us to to set an active field to get to use a field that saves the last random number. So, like in this in this exercise, you cannot set the like you're not supposed to to set the value of a random number. So, if the user calls it with a value calls this uh, active field with a value, we throw an error. And uh, if they don't call it with, with a with a value, we just we just we just return the value of that uh, field. So it's actually a field that looks no, it's actually a function that looks like a field. Mm, okay. And yeah, like there is more uh, environment thing environment uh, stuff going on for the uh, active bindings and the private bindings. So uh, yeah, I guess we can say that uh, an R6 object has the environment for self, an environment for the active bindings, and an environment for the private bindings. Mm, the part of the reference semantics, the, I think this is... Uh, this is the the part when the when the not copy when, when modify uh starts. So they said if we actually want to uh copy an object, we have to use clone, and the 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 book has like a a really good good example uh for for this one because mm, this is actually. Like this is kind of important. Mm, okay, so we have a we have a class that is called uh, accumulator, and it's just gonna mm, it's just gonna have assume field, and we can mm, we can add. As many as many values uh, as we want on on that uh, accumulator. Okay. And if we declare another accumulator and we set it as the uh, value of the of our last object, remember that we had twenty on this uh, previous accumulator. If we check the zoom for the new one, it's gonna be 20. But then if we update the new one, now it has 120. And the A1, the previous accumulator will also have that uh, 120 in the zoom. So that's what it's that's what it means that uh that objects are not uh copy on on modify. Mm. And we have to use clone if we actually want to do that. And that's associated with well, this is another example. With the use of the of uh a method called finalizer. It works kind of the, the same as the of the of the as the initialize. This will be called automatically by the garbage collector when the object is removed. 
because we have to remember that these objects, because they are not copy and modified, will be removed only once. So when we, yeah, that's, I don't think that, I mean, it's it's not an easy thing to grasp, but but yeah, like they have a, a finalized a final method to clean the boxes. Uh, we should use it to to release any resource or uh, clean anything that that we that we uh, that we set it on the on the initial initialized method. Mm, and. Yeah, there's there's another another uh, example. The the book like talks a lot about what are the consequences for this uh, copy uh, on modify, and yeah, and finally like the final section is why we, we would like to use R six instead of the reference classes. They said uh, it is similar, but uh, R sixes are are simple. The reference classes requires to understand uh, is for they have good do documentation. Mm, they have simpler mechanism for cross package subclasses. They are faster and, and like we should use them instead of the reference class. Mm, and I think that's that's it. Like I will just we talk a, a little bit. Last time about the uh about the bioconductor objects, we we just mentioned that that the bioconductor uses R six classes, and I just wanted to to show you one of the one of those uh one of those objects. It's called that's kind of the 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 main object uh for for bioconductor packages that that use uh this this thing it's called sumarize experiment and uh in sumarize experiment those objects will have a matrix that is the the an an essay that will mean your i don't know gene counts or or anything and then they will have another field that is called the, the metadata mm, you will call methods on those objects and they will update them in place as as we saw and yeah they are a bit weird and like it's it's a it's a different concept as using uh just data frames and 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 lists so it's it's not like it's not for everyone i i don't like them <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a more complicated object, no? Because yeah. like you need like to have like the object is more complicated than just a table. It's linked to so many other concepts and they are linked. Yes. So it's, it's it's more complex in some way, no? It's yes, yes, it, yes, it's more complex. And they also have these weird references when you were you rose rows will still be a matrix and call will still be a matrix but call like call them associated with the metadata i mean it's it's way too much like you could just like, have two two data frames and that uh, like do everything you want with those data frames <laughs> but well, yeah, that, that was our six thank you does anyone have question yes i want to share something it was great uh, I will type in to the chat. Thanks a lot, uh, Diana. It was great.